Thank you for taking part in this debate on the future of care and support in England. We want to hear from as many people as possible. It's your opportunity to tell us what you really think. Your views will help to inform potential solutions to create a new system in the future. I believe that demographic change in an ageing society is as important as challenge as climate change. A care and support system needs to meet the needs of a changing society. It's a massive challenge, not just for government, but for increasing numbers of families and society as a whole. It's an issue which arguably has touched a small number of families at a particular stage of life. It now touches the vast majority of families. Baby boomers are starting to experience the system for themselves and are concerned about what they find when they access the system for ageing parents. It's also an issue of social justice. What kind of society do we want to live in in this country? The way we treat older people with dignity and respect. The rights of disabled people to expect equality of citizenship and also people with mental health needs. It's not just a financial issue. There are some frightening figures out there. A funding gap of about £6 billion if we don't act in the next 10 or 15 years. But it's about how do we give people the choice, the independence and the control they've told us that they want. So where does the responsibility lie in terms of this system? Well, it's a shared responsibility. Shared between the state, individuals, family members where a family exists, public agencies, the voluntary sector, employers and also the wider community. We should also remember, often more than we do so, the contribution the wider community could and should make in terms of supporting people to have the best possible quality of life and to live independently. And arguably for many people, the difference that professional interventions make compared to the difference that's made by family members and carers, neighbours and community networks can be marginal. We often forget this when we talk about what care and support system we want to create in the future. The debate tends to be a very status debate about the relationship between statutory providers, providers in the voluntary and private sectors, but it isn't. It's also a massive debate about individuals, families, communities, and to some extent employers. People want a system that's easy to access, that's high quality and personal to their needs, which puts maximum power and control in the hands of the people who use services and their families. So it's a massive challenge. It's an exciting opportunity. It's an issue which will affect the vast majority of individuals and families in our society. I encourage everybody to think outside the box. Don't be confined to the usual debates. If there was a blank piece of paper, the system would never have been designed the way it is now. How can we therefore design a new system so that users and families will say in the future that this is a system which is on my side rather than a system I feel I'm constantly battling against. This is something that we need to face up to together. Of course, there has to be a dose of realism. There has to be a dose of realism about costs and affordability. Because if we were to start with a blank piece of paper which suggests somehow affordability doesn't matter, I believe we're misleading people in the most disingenuous way. So let's be ambitious, let us be visionary, but let's also try to come up with a care and support system which makes sense in terms of fairness and sustainability. Thank you for participating in this debate. It's one of the greatest challenges that we face. But I'm excited about the potential that we have together to not tinker at the edges with the existing social care system, but to create a care and support system that we can all be genuinely proud of for the future.